know the RBI's uh, move to pause the repo rate at 6.5 has been a welcome step for uh, the real estate industry. RBI did hike the rate six times uh, from an all-time low in the past, of course, to uh, curtail inflation. We did anticipate that the RBI will take a pausing stance. So definitely it will augur well, uh, you know, for the sentiments uh, of the market, bringing them closer to, you know, making the purchase. The Reserve Bank of India as the RBI's Monetary Policy Committee or the MPC on June 8 kept the repo rate or the rate at which it lends short-term funds to banks at 6.5%. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das announced the decision after a three-day meeting of the rate-setting panel. Hello everyone, Namaskar, Salam, Sat Sri Akal, Vanakkam. We are back with a fresh episode of Keeping It Real by Housing.com. This is India's first real estate-focused podcast. It brings to you updates, views and insights about the reality sector, an explainer on a chosen subject and a deep dive into an industry or topic. The Reserve Bank of India or the RBI has maintained the status quo on interest rates. To dwell deeper on the impact of the same, we have Ankita Sood, head of research at housing.com. Developers cannot escape liabilities of project completion after promoters change. And what is sale deed? How is it different from a sale agreement? Details of all of these and much more in this episode. Stay tuned. The Reserve Bank of India as the RBI's Monetary Policy Committee or the MPC on June 8 kept the repo rate or the rate at which it lends short-term funds to banks at 6.5%. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das announced the decision after a three-day meeting of the rate-setting panel. The Monetary Policy Committee met on 6th, 7th and 8th June and based on an assessment of the macroeconomic situation and outlook, the MPC decided unanimously to keep the policy repo rate unchanged at 6.5%. Consequently, the standing deposit facility, that is SDF rate, remains at 6.25% and the marginal standing facility and the bank rates, they stand at 6.75%. The MPC also decided by a majority of five out of six members to remain focused on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation progressively aligns with the target while supporting growth. The Consumer Price Index or the CPI inflation moderated in April to 4.70% year-on-year and remained within the RBI's target range, 2.6%, for the second consecutive month. We spoke to Ankita Sood, head of research at housing.com, proptiger.com and makan.com to break down the implications of interest rates on the property market. Let's listen in. Hello and a warm welcome, Ankita. Glad to have you again for this show. Thank you for having me, Gaurav. It's always a pleasure. Uh, Ankita, the RBI has retained the repo rate at 6.5% for the second consecutive policy. What does it imply for the property market? So, obviously, you know, the RBI's uh, move to pause the repo rate at 6.5 has been a welcome step for uh, the real estate industry. Real estate is a sentiment uh, game, the property market. So, definitely uh, pausing the rates has or will have an impact uh, going forward as well. Had it uh, gone up, which we did not anticipate, we did anticipate that the RBI will take a pausing stance. So definitely it will augur well, uh, you know, for the sentiments uh, of the market. Now, just to give you a backdrop, RBI did hike the rate six times uh, from an all-time low in the past, of course, to uh, curtail inflation. So obviously they had to go up, but we are still, you know, within the pre-pandemic range. So definitely a welcome step for the industry and uh, will be a sentiment uh, booster bringing them closer to, you know, making the purchase. It would not be unrealistic to expect a rate cut in the coming months if inflation remains firmly within RBI's comfort levels. Do you expect a spike in reality demand going into the festive season this year, assuming lower interest rates will kick in by then? Uh, I would not say that the RBI will pivot 
you know the, definitely it has paused but uh, we do not think that uh, you know it would go back of course uh, you know the increase in interest rates was uh, to curtail inflation and it is well within the target band of 2 to 6% so the rbi is uh, you know according to us will maintain a uh, status quo and definitely interest rates are not going to uh, go back uh coming to your second question regarding the festive season uh, now the festive season always uh you know has that sentiment uh, attached to it it is itself uh, in itself a sentiment booster where people search and shortlist properties and you know they book during this uh, auspicious time this is also visible in our iris index uh, that tracks the high intent high volume search activity across 42 cities so our index sees the uh, definite spikes in the months of uh, september and october because more and more people are wanting to filter out properties and uh, you know close on in their searches so uh, festive season you know as is will remain uh, you know a sentiment booster and also you know if i talk in terms of data despite the consecutive rate hikes the market has been good the market currently or i would say predominantly is an end user market and despite the consecutive rate hikes we see that uh, sales have uh, you know if i talk about 2022 they've grown by 50% from last year and uh, you know well within uh, even this new supply is uh, at an all time high that shows the bar, uh, developer confidence in the market so yes the rates are a sentiment booster or a dampener but uh, given the current market where the shift is more towards home ownership uh, i do not think it will have a significant impact short term yes but it would not have an impact if somebody actually has to buy in uh, or is looking for a property and closing in on their searches i'm going to final question on this team uh, would it be fair to describe that we are close to a bull run in the property market triggered by lower borrowing rates and benign inflation absolutely uh, so real estate moves in uh, cycles you know of course the cycles have shortened initially we used to see like a 10 to 12 year cycle it's it's come down to 7 uh, to 8 years and uh, covid definitely a black swan uh, event but it has actually acted as a booster shot for the industry and we see that upward trend we see that uh, move Uh, you know prior to 2020 before the pandemic there was more focus on a uh, shared economy but as the pandemic kicked in uh, you know more uh, impetus towards ownership home is no more seen as an investment it's uh, a safe haven so uh, you know it, it it it's going to uh, pick up it has already picked up that's what we keep saying that we are in the real estate up cycle right now which will go on for a you know for a good number of years going forward thank you ankita for taking the time out and dropping by to have this conversation with us it's an absolute delight as always to host you thank you so much gorup thank you so much for the opportunity The National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission or the NCDRC has held in the case of a Bengaluru-based developer that the promoter will be responsible for home buyer's investments even after the project has been transferred to another company. This could set a precedent in protecting home buyer's rights in delayed projects. In this case brought against Bengaluru-based developer's Nitesh Estates by a person who had paid for a house but hadn't got possession by the promised date. The developer argued that it had transferred the entire Nitesh Cape Cod project to Inesa Ventures LLP through a Karnataka Real Estate Regulatory or CREA order in April 2023. The commission noted that there was a delay of around 7 years from the promised date of possession. The developer has definitely committed a deficiency of service under the Consumer Protection Act, said the order dated May 30. The NCDRC pointed out that Section 18 of the Real Estate Regulation and Development Act holds the promoter liable for a refund. Subsequent agreement between the parties will not affect the pending litigation. Section 52 of the Transfer of Property Act 1882 protects the jurisdiction of the court. 
prompt such transfers, the order added. The NCDRC overturned the Karnataka RERA order and directed the developer to return the amount paid by the home buyer with 9% annual interest. The order also directed the developer to repay the buyer's loan due at the bank within 10 weeks. What is a sale deed? How is it different from a sale agreement? A sale deed is a legal document that proves that a property has been transferred from the seller to the buyer. A sale deed acts as the main legal document confirming the sale and the transfer of ownership of property from the seller to the buyer. The registration of a sale deed concludes the property purchase process. A sale deed usually consists of the following information. Details of the buyers and sellers, such as name, age and addresses. Property description, such as total area, details of construction, the exact address and surroundings. Sale amount, including advance payment paid, as well as the mode of payment. Time frame in which the property title will be actually passed on to the buyer. Actual date of delivery of possession. Indemnity clause, that is, the seller promises to pay the buyer for any damages in case of disputes with regard to the ownership resulting in monetary losses to the buyer. According to the Indian Registration Act 1908, any agreement for transfer of any interest in an immovable property of value more than rupees 100 is required to be registered. Thus, a title in an immovable property can only be transferred by a sale deed. Can a sale deed be cancelled? A sale deed can be cancelled if the seller and the buyer have an agreement to this effect. Sections 31 to 33 of the Specific Relief Act 1963 specify the conditions under which a sale deed can be cancelled. What is a sale agreement? A sale agreement is signed between the buyer and the seller once they reach a verbal agreement about property sale. A sale agreement mentions the terms, conditions and other crucial aspects of the future sale. The Transfer of Property Act 1882, which regulates matters dealing with the sale and transfer of house property, defines the contract for sale or an agreement for sale as a contract that the sale of such property shall take place on the terms settled between the parties. All sale agreements have to be documented and registered to have legal validity. The Supreme Court has ruled that an unregistered agreement to sell is not admissible as evidence in a permanent injunction suit. So, to summarize, a sale deed is an actual transfer of property ownership, while a sale agreement is a promise to a future transfer of property ownership. A sale deed includes information from both the parties, the buyer and the seller, their ages, addresses and other details. A sale agreement specifies the terms and conditions under which the property will be transferred. A sale deed gives the rights and interest in the property to the new owner. A sale agreement gives a right for the purchaser to purchase the property in question on the satisfaction of certain conditions. A buyer has to pay stamp duty and registration fee to execute a sale deed. A sale agreement precedes sale deed signed and executed by the seller and buyer on a non-judicial stamp paper. That's it from us for this episode. We shall be back again with a fresh episode of Keeping It Real by Housing.com with information and insights on the real estate industry. You can catch the episode on Housing.com, on the Housing.com app, on Earshot.in, Spotify.com, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Ghana.com and Geo7. Take care and stay safe.